So to begin the proof, I've drawn a, a rectangular prism again to help visualize where P1 and P2 are in 3 space. So let's also label some other corners here. So I'm going to label this uh, front corner here point A. And point A, let's see what's going on for point A. Point A has the same Y coordinate as P1, and it has the same X coordinate as P2. So let's label this as X2, Y1, Z1. Okay, so this purple point, point A, has moved over to the right the same amount that P1 is. So that's why those Y coordinates agree. Um, and then it also lies in the front plane of this rectangular prism, which is why the X coordinates between A and P2 agree. Let's label another point for ease of reference. We'll call this point B. And point B has the coordinates x2, y2, z1. OK, so it has the same x and y coordinates as P2, but it's just dropped lower uh, you know, kind of in that vertical direction, it's dropped a little bit lower, it lies in the plane with Z1. Okay, so we have a couple of interesting right triangles that we could look at. So one right triangle of interest lies from P1 to A over to B, and that is a right triangle Okay, and so I'll put a little symbol there denoting that's a right triangle. We also have another right triangle here which goes from P1 to B all the way up to P2. And so we could denote that as a right triangle. Okay, so let's label a few other side lengths and then we will use the Pythagorean theorem to prove our result. So first of all, notice that the length from P1 to A is just the difference in its x coordinates. So this is just the absolute value of x2 minus x1. Also notice that the distance across this front side, which we'll call AB, the length of AB, that's just the magnitude of y2 minus y1. And lastly, let's notice that this front edge, B P2, that's given by the magnitude of Z2 minus Z1. Okay, let's also make a note here about these triangles. So we have a triangle given by P1, A, B. That is a right triangle. And so we will use Pythagorean's theorem. Similarly, the triangle P1, B, and P2 is a right triangle, and so we can use Pythagorean's theorem there. OK, so let's make a note here. We will use the Pythagorean theorem And we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. We're going to use that for triangle P1, B, P2. And so going back to that green triangle there, that gives us that the hypotenuse squared equals side length P1, B squared plus the length of P, B2 squared. Okay, and then for this quantity P1, B squared, we can use Pythagorean theorem for our other triangle. So let's use the Pythagorean theorem for triangle B1AB. 
And what that says is that says that P1B squared equals P1A squared plus the length of AB squared. So we can substitute that quantity in and we're just about done. So let's plug that in. On the left hand side we still have P1, P2 squared. So the length of that side squared equals using our Pythagorean theorem here we have uh, the length of P1A squared plus the length of AB squared. Right, we've substituted that piece in and we still have the length of BP2 squared. Plugging in our known quantities right, up at the very top of this proof we we made some statements here about the lengths of those sides and now it is time to use those quantities. We'll plug them in. So on the left hand side we still have P1, P2 squared and on the right hand side we have the length of A2 minus A1 squared. We have the magnitude of Y2 minus Y1 squared and we have the magnitude of X2 minus excuse me, z2 minus z1 squared. Okay, so this boils down to x2 minus x1 squared. We can drop the absolute value y2 minus y1 squared plus a z2 minus z1 squared and then solving for that length p1 P2 will take the square root of both sides. Now that does introduce a plus or minus root, but since this is a magnitude, it's the length of a side, it cannot ever be negative, so it's just the positive root. Okay, so un underneath positive root we've got x2 minus x1 squared plus a y2 minus y1 squared and a z2 minus a z1 squared. And that completes the proof of our theorem.